Hello, hello. Welcome to another episode of How I Teach with the Language Arts Lady. I'm Donna Reish, your hostess and your teacher for this episode of How I Teach, episode number 22. So um, this one is, I was kind of deciding, trying to decide whether I should make it into two or make it into one, um, have a two-parter, and I really want to try to do it in one. Um, so, uh, I will just hit it, right? I'm just going to get started here with a little bit of housekeeping and then move right into it, uh, because it is an exciting episode of storytelling, story writing, and, uh, just a great way to get started in story writing that students can be successful in immediately, which is so cool. Anytime we can have anything that students can have success immediately in is a win-win. So anyway, let's start with our teacher's notebook. Um, if you are an avid listener, you know that every week you get free teacher's notebook episode sheets and I'm showing them on my screen right now. If you're on video and they look like this and they have um, part of or a whole lesson and this one has like the whole thing. I mean, it doesn't have some of the mini lessons like um, oh, how to write quotes, how to write dialogue, and how to uh, do similes and metaphors and things like that, just because uh, it's, it's a really, if that would be half of the book and it's really long. <laughs> um, but it does have enough for you to do this assignment with your students. So that's um, something that you have access to every single week. And then of course you have two ways to listen, you to learn and to watch. You can join me on your favorite podcast um, app and listen and then follow along um, with your printed off teacher's notebook. And that way um, you have it in front of you while I'm teaching because I do teach from the text that I have in front of me that I'm giving to you as well. Um, the other way to learn is to watch the video and that is also available at um, the uh, Language Arts Lady blog and at YouTube. And so both of these ways are ways to consume this. Both of them, you'll have the option, opportunity to have stuff in front of you because the PowerPoint that I'm about to go to is the exact same thing as the teacher's notebook sheets. So you'll be able to follow along with me either way, whether you print your sheets or you um, and you listen to the podcast or you watch here. I do wanna encourage you to print off all of your teacher's notebook sheets. They are free every single week with lessons and materials that you can use right away with your students. So you can learn how to teach it and then you can go teach it. So without further ado, I'm going to head over to the PowerPoint and get started. So here we go. All right, um, wait a minute, I'm in the wrong one. <laughs> Okay, excuse me there, I had the wrong one. I had episode 21 PowerPoint up. All right, which was last week, and that was um, an introduction to um, an, the order of teaching parts of speech, um, my take on it anyway, and how I teach articles slash noun markers. And you got some free article posters there, and noun marker, article noun marker posters to use with your classroom, with your students in episode 21. All right, so here we are, episode 22. And I am going to be teaching an amazing introduction to story writing. It's something that I call twice told tale writing. I came up with this because um, when uh, um, I was, when my kids were younger, we used to listen to these songs called piggyback songs. And so they would take a song and uh, Twinkle Twinkle Little Star and they would make something up. So instead of Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. Maybe the song would go, and I'm just trying to think of something here that rhymes. And we might say, um, we might say toothbrush, toothbrush, um, in the drawer, brushing my teeth is what you're for. Okay, I just made that up. So anyway, and it, it's a piggyback, right? And so um, I made up this way of teaching story writing called piggyback uh, writing. And then um, after Zach and I wrote so many of the samples and wrote so many lessons, we have probably two dozen twice told tale lessons. Um, we put them all in one book and I decided to call them twice told tales. So uh, that is where it came from. But basically what it does is that it uses a model story. So a story that students are already familiar with 
And it uses that model to teach for students to learn how to write their own story uh, from the model. Um, and the reason that it's so effective and I, and I use it, oh man, a few times every semester um, with my students. And the reason it's so effective is because it takes story writers who are more reluctant. So, so I don't know how much writing you've taught, um, but throughout my years of teaching, teach writing, writing books, as well as teaching writing, we have these different camps. And um, after a few months in, I can tell you around the table who is going to be in which camp. So there's a student camp who give me research anytime. I'm going to look things up. I'm going to write research, a research paper. I'm going to get information. It's going to be easy. And then we have the creative types, right? And then somewhere in between we have the essays, but then we have the creative types. And these are the story writers who, um, you know, they are staring into space. You know, they have these great ideas floating around and you can just see it churning. It's just so amazing to watch students learn. Um, but you can just see it churning in there and they are always like thinking. Um, so they are the creative aspect. So they want to come up with their plot. They want to come up with characters. They want to come up with the obstacles and so forth. And the research people and this and the story writing people never uh, should mi mix, right? Because the story writing kids, they're just like, oh, I don't want to write research. It's just just finding information. I want to come up with my own story. And then the research people are like, oh, I hate story writing. I always have to think about things. I never know what to make happen. I never know, you know, so we have these these two camps and they're both, you know, great in their own right, right? Because every, nobody's the same, everybody's different. But uh, the twice told tale really bridges the gap between these research-based give me, let me come up with three reasons, even essay writing, let me come up with three reasons and look up some, some data for that. And, you know, or let me do this research for research writing, but don't make me come up with main characters and a plot and obstacles and solutions, you know, resolutions and so forth. So the twice told tale really, really bridges the gap because it gives them so much already. So I'm going to dig into this. Um, this is a junior high book, so it's 6th, 7th, and 8th. Um, it comes from, what is it, Twice Told Tales, level 3. So that's a new book that's coming out. But the Twice Told Tales are interwoven in all of the um, Meaningful Composition books, as well as in all of the Write for a Month books. So there's a whole line of just Twice Told Tales. And then the there's there are many, many others, like Peter Pan has a Twice Told Tale, a couple places. Beauty and the Beast have a couple... Uh, twice told tales. Like I said, there are about two dozen of them throughout all my books. So um, this you could use sixth, seventh, and eighth. Um, definitely, definitely ninth and tenth graders could use this. Some very advanced fifth graders could. And so, uh, and I'll explain a little bit more about how to adjust it as we go. All right. So you know how I always start. I always start with expectations, right? Expectation explanations. So I'm explaining to my students what is expected. And so uh, this is pretty detailed. Again, this is sixth, seventh, and eighth grade. So this is pretty detailed as to the ex expectations. I have found that using this detailed expectation explanation works really well. I have my kids put a sticky note at the top. Um, so they know where they're, because they have grammar pages and everything in their binder. So this way they know where their project for the next two weeks, I do this project over two weeks. They know uh, where this two week project starts and they know where they can find their overview. So then they want to come back and say, how many sentences am I doing? Am I doing an opening? Am I doing a closing? Do I have to have dialogue? All of that kind of stuff. They um, know exactly what is expected. So um, I'm going to walk through this in the same way that I would walk through it with them. So here we go. So everybody, guess what? It's piggyback story. It's twice told tale time. So you are going to write a story based off of another story. And this story that you're going to model from is the emperor's new clothes. And we'll talk, we talk about that, of course. What do they know about the emperor's new clothes? Have they read stories? Did they read them you know, during their childhood? Did they read to their younger siblings? Did they see um, you know, videos, movies of the emperor's new clothes, so forth? And then I say, but instead of using the emperor and his invisible clothes, which 
character in the model, you will choose another character and another time and place. And then I give them ideas. I always give students ideas in every project, whether it's research, essay, story writing, no matter what it is, I give them ideas um, because there are those who just need a little bit of a push there. And once you start giving them ideas, then they can come up with their own, even from those ideas. Or sometimes they use the ideas that are given and I'm okay with that as well. So you could use a general and a fake weapon that he thinks he has, but does not a girl and a fake beauty potion, a millionaire and a fake business, a person and someone with counterfeit money, a mouse and a mouse trap, a fish and a baited fish hook, a fish and an angler fish, or something else altogether different. And don't forget, I always have samples of every single project. So in addition to the model here, the students also have a sample and that sample will be um, given to them so that they can see how, how somebody else did this, right? That just, wow, samples. One of the most important things you can do for your kids is writing. Um, so, wow, this is definitely gonna be a two-parter. Here we go. I'm just gonna slow down and give you the whole scoop without rushing. I always have a tendency to feel like I have to rush because in 30 minutes. All right, so then we talk about the sentence and paragraph um, expectations. And this is, um, you can see over in quotations that they're going to have dialogue. And so because they're going to have dialogue, and don't forget, I've already taught them dialogue. Everything that is expected of students is either already taught or they are learning it in this lesson. So in this particular book, they've already had dialogue in the first project. They've had some dialogue lessons. Here we have probably, I'm sure we do have a dialogue lesson again. Um, so anything that they're expected to do, uh, they are taught that as well. So here we have 26 to 34. I'm on Roman numeral two. So I just tell them where I'm at all the time. They go Roman numeral one. Then we say, okay, now let's talk about the paragraphs and the sentences. Roman numeral two and Roman numeral three. You see those now basic students. So those are the beginner beginner writers of this project. You're going to do 26 to 34 short paragraphs and extension students will do 34 to 50. And they're like 50 paragraphs, you know, and I'll say, well, if you're basic, you know, you can just do 26 and don't forget that the reason we have so many paragraphs is because you're going to have dialogue. You're going to have people speaking back and forth to each other. And then I tell them a paragraph of dialogue might be, hi, she said, what's up? He said, not much, she said. So we have three paragraphs right there, right? So I always calm their nerves. I always calm their nerves. And sometimes they just moan and groan because um, everybody's doing it and they just join in. And then I encourage them and I tell them they can do it. And I give them samples and I uh, remind them of what they've done in the past that has been so amazing. And then they're ready to go, sweet babies. All right, um, so because of Roman numeral three, because of the dialogue that you're going to have, I would rather you count sentences. Now I have this thing about word counts, sentence counts, paragraph counts, and um, I've never been a teacher who liked to assign, you know, 100 words, 400 words, because words make up sentences and sentences make up paragraphs and paragraphs make up stories, chapters of books, research papers, essays, and I, I feel like when you, when you take it down to wor a word count, you are not really focusing on meaning. I, I don't know, I just have, I've always had this thing that because I remember in school, maybe it's because I remember doing this and I remember you need, I needed a hundred words and I had, you know, 96. So rather than thinking about meaning, what does a student do if they need a hundred words and instead they only have 90 words. They don't add more meaning to their paper. What they do is go through and try to find places to add words, right? Whether it really gives meaning or not. 
So I focus on paragraphs and then give them a, a, a sentence range within each paragraph because a paragraph is a unit of thought, right? Whoa, babies, writing is thinking. So I focus on writing a paragraph of thought, right? A paragraph is a unit of thought. Now, when you get into dialogue, if I were to say you just have 25 paragraphs, unfortunately, some students would just have very short dialogue, right? Like, hi, what's up? Not much, how are you? I'm good, you know, and, they're, and they wouldn't really develop their story well. So because of that, I focus whenever we are having dialogue, I have students focus on the number of sentences. So basic students, and I tell them, you're gonna do 60 to 80 total sentences and extension students are gonna do 70 to 90. Now, when you get into uh, right for a month four, which is uh, high, beginning high school, and right for month five, which is upper high school, or the upper level meaningful composition books, especially nine two, which is uh, high school creative writing, it, this number is going to be more like 160 sentences, 240 sentences, right? Because the expectations are going to be greater as they go. So this is a good point to stop and talk about how um, the sentence count can be changed to accommodate the level of the students. So if this, if you're going to have a sixth grader doing 60 to 80 and you want, you have a fifth grader who wants to do this project, you could just go down to 40 to 60 sentences for the whole project. Now you have to really consider the model that they're writing from because if they're writing from a model that is, you know, 80 sentences long, it's going to be hard to make a, a spinoff of that in only 40 sentences. So you can go down a little bit, but you really need to focus on the model and the plot and the characters and how long it takes to tell that well, right? Because if we make it too short, then we end up with an essay. You know, I always tell my kids, you know, when you have like, there was an emperor, he, um, was given clothes and uh, they, the people who made them and uh, the, the people who made them uh, didn't really make any magic clothes or any amazing clothes. They just pretended to make clothes. And, but the emperor didn't want to say that he couldn't see the clothes. So he went along with it and just thought he must not be wise enough to see them. Or, and, and then when he was out in the crowd, a child saw and realized that, his, that he didn't have any clothes on. And the child was the only one who would say that the emperor didn't have any clothes on. And that is how they found out that the people were really frauds and he really didn't have any clothes. Okay, so then I'll tell them something like that. And I'll say, that is not a story, right? That is a retelling, that's kind of a narration almost an essay right and so we want to uh, to give the project length enough length to be able to tell the story well so i always tell students when they have a shorter project you know to not not use a lot of dialogue and stuff because you don't have space for it you need that space for your setting and your and your um you know, your antagonist, your protagonist, and all of the elements of story writing. So the main thing with the story writing and the length is to make sure that they always match each other, that can it be done in the length of space that we're giving them in terms of sentence numbers, paragraph numbers, and so forth. All right, so uh, they're not gonna do a separate opening, they're not gonna do a separate closing. I always teach students to weave the setting um, and set the stage right from the beginning as opposed to coming back later in story writing. We do it differently in essay writing and research writing where they need to write first, then tell their reader, get the reader excited about reading their essay or their report. But in story writing, we would write in the opening and the closing, the resolution, the, the, um, the setting the stage, uh, the setting and so forth. All right, and this particular project, they are going to have dialogue, Roman numeral six, and then there are other skills. So those are the, some of the other lessons that are um, in this particular uh, lesson. So character development, hinders development, time period study, dialogue, um, yeah, um, piggybacking, scene development, similes, and metaphors. All right, so 
The first thing we always do is we start with the model when it comes to the twice told tale. They need a strong foundation to build their story off of. So if they're going to choose a different person than the emperor, and they're going to choose different um, other characters to trick the main character, and they are going to choose something else that is invisible besides clothing, and they're probably or quite possibly going to choose a different time period for their story to take place, they need a strong model to write from. And I actually, in the Twice Told Tales, you'll see as we go through here, I have two different kind of levels. So you can either write directly from the model, paragraph by paragraph, scene by scene, or a student can make up their own paragraphs and their own scenes, but just still have it be the same thing where it is um, you know, a character uh, who is being tricked, other, other characters who are tricking him and what he's being tricked by. So you'll see that as we go through here. That way, my um, avid story writers, my experienced story writers can have a little more leeway and my scared story writers can say, you know what, I'm just going to go scene by scene and I can make up my own thing from here. So here's the model and we can see that this has um, 15 scenes, but that is not how many paragraphs it has. Okay, so this has um, 26 to 34 paragraphs for basic and there are 16 scenes. So let me just tell you a little bit of what I would tell them as we go through here. First of all, we would read a lot of this and um, then they would read the rest at home. So we can see scene one is one paragraph long, that's setting the stage. Scene two, sorry about that, scene two is two paragraphs long because it is, um, let me see, there's one person speaking. Uh, and those are the tricksters, two paragraphs long in that scene. The next scene, scene three, has one, two, three, four, four paragraphs in it. So again, I can't emphasize enough how they've already had so much paragraph development. They have already had so much dialogue writing. They have already had so many quotation lessons, right? I wouldn't just throw this at a child you know, who is in seventh grade and say, you know, sink or swim, right? So at this point, I would have them get out their highlighters and they would draw arrows at the beginning of each paragraph in scene three. So I'd say, okay, put an arrow right there pointing to the, that's one paragraph of somebody speaking. And then put an arrow right there beside thank you. That's another person speaking. Put an arrow right there with you are too kind. That's another person speaking and put an arrow right there with nonsense. That's another person speaking. And then we have a whole dialogue lesson throughout um, this two week project. Okay. And then scene three is the emperor and the men dialogue about their gratitude. All right. So that is where the, the scenes can have multiple paragraphs in them. Okay. I have students develop what their scenes are going to be. For younger students, they're always called paragraphs because we just assume that every paragraph is a, a different action and they don't have dialogue. So they would just have paragraph one, paragraph two, paragraph three, and every paragraph is a unit of thought. So every paragraph basically changes either the location um, and scene changes. I always tell students that something changed to go from one scene to another. So you either had a change of scenery, right, where you are, you had a change of characters, different characters came in, or you had a change of action, different actions are taking place. So in that case, you can see in scene three here, they're dialoguing, and that's the emperor and the, and the tricksters. And then in scene four, the weavers are weaving. So that is how students always know in other story writing instances in my books, they always know how to change scenes. Now in this, they don't have to worry about it because the scene's already laid out for them, as you'll see as we go through here. So, um, yep, we would read it, we would discuss it, and then if we learn our similes and metaphors, we learn our paragraph development, we learn our dialogue all from this model. It's a, it's a gorgeous model. Zach writes all my models, he's amazing. 
Um, so we're going to go through here and we can see more scenes, more paragraphs, more dialogue. Um, and I also tell students, especially in sixth, seventh, and eighth grade, that you know what, if you can't remember how to how to punctuate your dialogue, you put it in there and you do the best you can. And either my editor, because all of my students' papers go to outside editors and then come to me for editing, because I have 50 a week and I don't have time to edit them all by myself. So I have an outside editor who edits them first and then I edit on the edits of the outside editor. <laughs> I know that's a mouthful, but that is how they get, that's how students learn in my classes is through their edits. So I always tell them, you go ahead and do the best you can. If you, if you wanna text me or ask me a question or send me a picture of something, I can tell you how to edit it, how to put your punctuation in. I can remind you. I'm just reminding because we've already had the lessons or we can just help. We can just fix it when you turn it in. Okay, we'll fix it for you. Right. And I do this really with all kinds of skills because, yes, this is the application in the teach, practice, apply method of learning. But if they are afraid of the application all the time in their writing, they're afraid they don't, so they don't put hard words in. They don't know how to spell them. They don't put great descriptions. They don't make compound sentences because they can't remember what to do with a colon or what to do with a semicolon. Or they don't use a lot of sentence openers because they can't remember where the comma goes with the subordinate clause opener. Or they can't do dialogue. They don't put a lot of dialogue in because they're afraid that they'll mess up the speech tags or the, punctu the internal punctuation or whatever. I don't want them to feel that way. I want them to know that, that they are learning how to do all these things. And this is where they're bringing all the skills together to apply them. And if they need help, I'm gonna help them. And I'm going to fix things for them. And then they're going to learn from my fixes. All right, so here's the model. <laughs> Still on the model, aren't you glad? I just, I decided 20 minutes ago to make this a two-parter. Okay, so um, there we go, all 16, scenes. And I, when we read together in class, I always read the first few aloud with them and the last few aloud with them. And I tell them things, you know, if I, if I want to point out, you know, there's the one that calls opener, look how great that one is and where the comma is and all that. And oh, wow, look at this great speech tag. Isn't it amazing how it's got, doesn't just say said, said, said every time. Anyway, I always teach all those things as I go. All right. So then we have, of course, the, then one child cried out innocently, why isn't the emperor wearing any clothes? And then somebody else, we know it's a new speaker because it's a new paragraph. The emperor does not have anything on, shouted his father louder, and others began shouting the same thing. And then, you know, so on and so forth. So 15, 15 scenes. And I don't know, I'm guessing something like 60 paragraphs or 50 paragraphs um, in, in this uh, project. All right. So there's the model, and they're going to have a sign to finish reading that at home. And then they are going to start developing their own. So this is where it gets super, super exciting, right? Because by now they are thinking, as I said earlier about the wheels turning, the good news is that it's not just the story writers at this point, because the model lights a fire under even the non-story writers. And so that is what is so exciting about the twice told tales that they are not just thinking in terms of um, you know, it's not just the story writers who are excited at this point. The non story writers are thinking of things, too. They're thinking of, you know, the, some of the examples, a beauty potion for a a, uh, a lady about to go into a beauty pageant in Roman times. I mean, they're, they're thinking they're thinking thinking and they're thinking about the model and how it can be applied to their own story and they're excited about it and they're whispering to each other and they're writing margin notes in and they're holding up their hands saying what if I wanted to have a Jedi in space then you can have a Jedi in space okay what if I wanted to have you know a clown who thought he had a clown suit on but all the time he just went out on the high wire with no clown suit on then you can have a clown with no clown suit on, right? And they're they're processing and they're thinking and they're and I'm encouraging and it is just a truly beautiful thing. So they're going to choose their setting, time, place for their story, 
and they're going to write it on the lines. They're going to write it on the lines and um, then they're going to choose their characters. Okay, and they're going to go back to the twice told tale piggyback story and realize, you know, that there is an emperor. So there's a main character who is being duped. And then there are the dupers. <laughs> and then there, there are crowds of people. And then there's the audience and so forth. Okay, and it says right there, feel free to change characters, plots, situations, or anything else with the emperor's new clothes, as long as you keep the point of the story. So they cannot use a, an emperor and cannot use invisible clothes, but they can use anything else. Okay, now they're going to get to their hindrances, their obstacles, and so forth. And, you know, the, the emperor had a lot of obstacles um, getting in his, standing in his way. You know, he was prideful. Um, he was lied to by his inner circle, and he believed them. Um, you know, whatever might be the conflicts, the problems, the obstacles that the character is encountering. And then um, ideas about the time period. And here they might need to do a little research if they want to do a certain time period or if they want to do a Martian, they might have to do some research about Mars, right? And I always tell them, write down everything you can think of in your directed brainstorming box, which is the page I'm on now. Write down everything that you can think of, even if you don't think you'll use it. So write down your setting details, obstacles, solutions that, the, that you might come up with, and then anything else that you want to uh, just that you don't want to forget. And so um, usually I actually tell them that these boxes have to be filled in um, three fourths of the way or something like that. Uh, so they don't just write a little note in each box. I give them um, the exact expectations. There you go, right? That is how uh, we all function better with expectations. All right, so this has to do with the dialogue lesson that is not included right now in this, but it is in the book. Um, it would take me, um, yeah, I think this lesson takes me about um, 90 minutes or so to teach uh, over a couple of sessions. And uh, so I introduce everything and then they start outlining and so forth. And then ne next week we have our similes and metaphors and dialogue and um, so forth. So it's, it's quite a lengthy, a lengthy lesson. All right, so then they're gonna design their scenes, but that's where we are gonna stop for this week. But I just want to, to show you kind of what we're going to talk about next week. So they're going to design their scenes by using, by using the training wheels that I told you about earlier for the non-story writers um, or for a story writer who maybe just doesn't have many ideas for this particular project. They are going to have the paragraphs, the scenes right there in front of them. And then they're going to come up with their own. I'm going to go over that next week. So you can see that they can just go scene by scene by scene, or they're just going to write their own scenes on the lines. Okay, and there's a sample outline um, and I'll go over that next week as well. All righty, I, um, yeah, I should have known twice told tales could never be done in one lesson. I'm sorry about that. All right, so thank you so much for joining me. Um, I'm excited to give you the Twice Told Tales because they are perfect project from six for, from sixth through twelfth graders. I do have some free ones for you, so you can get your free one for this Emperor's New Clothes. You can get that in your uh, hit episode number twenty two's um, uh, hit episode number twenty two's um, teacher's notebook. <laughs> that left me for a second. Teacher's notebook. But also, let me go back to the back and show you what else you can, where else you can get these lessons. So, of course, there's how you get your teacher's notebook. You can get each week, languageartsladyblog.com forward slash how I teach, or you can get all of them. There are 22 of them all put together in one book right now at the languageartsladyblog.com forward slash teacher's notebook. Free lessons. You don't want to miss them. All right. And, uh, these uh, um, free, these are three books from levels three through five uh, with free lessons. They also have three videos of me teaching the lessons. So different than that, how I teach where I teach the teacher. Um, this is where I actually teach a lesson as though I'm teaching it to students. And these are free. So there's one at each level, uh, one level one, one level two, one level three, one level four, one level five. They come from one of three books, Mowgli, Peter Pan or Beauty and the Beast. And they are completely free. 
um, at languageartsladyblog.com. So you can, uh, there are actually 18 freebies available, but those three are the ones that are at this level. All right, and then we also have all of these twice told tales. Okay, maybe I was wrong. Maybe there are more than 24. Um, I thought there were a couple dozen, but uh, these are all available in these books. So if you know that your kids like a certain, um, you know, character, um, let me see, we've got Beauty and the Beast, Elves and the Shoemaker, The Fir Tree, uh, Charles Dickens' Christmas Carol, Gift of the Magi, um, Dumbo, Goldilocks, Pro Frog Prince, Alice in Wonderland, Pinocchio, Mowgli, Peter Pan, Velveteen Rabbit, Steadfast Toy Soldier, Thumbelina, Chicken Little, Emperor's New Clothes, Cinderella, Jack and the Beanstalk, Snow White, Rapunzel, all pretty common. Um, they definitely grow, go up in difficulty as you get up into level four for beginning for high school, ninth, 10th, 11th, eighth graders could also do that, but then uh, level five, which is upper high school. So um, they get much more extensive with much more dialogue and um, uh, longer stories. Uh, they are also available in these books. These are one semester books, Meaningful Composition. They are faith-based, uh, but they also, they're faith-based in that they're mostly, they're character-based, um, character quality-based. So you can take a look at the samples also available at the character drink store there. But those are the ones that have these twice told tales in them, five, two, six, one, seven, two, and so forth. All right, so uh, looking forward to having some of you in classes this fall, uh, locally as well as online, and um, just really uh, excited to be teaching some small groups. I, my husband and I are both available, but for the writing things, um, I am doing this creative class. And my husband also is available to teach classes online or in person even if it's just like one class for one student for an hour a week or whatever, uh, to kind of hire a teacher, so to speak. So, alrighty, thank you for joining me in this episode. And uh, we will take up next week where we left off and finish uh, learning how to create the twice told tale from uh, the emperor's new clothes. So it's a fun one. Thanks again.